Hello, welcome to another video. This is a differential equation, another autonomous differential equation, but in this case you have the fourth derivative of the function is equal to the function itself. I'm sure if you recall there are some functions that behave like this. Um, you may not be able to gather all of them, but by the time we solve this, at least we're gonna get to know some of these functions if you don't already know. But it's something you've done before, you just never paid attention to it if you didn't know. But I know for most of my viewers, you definitely have an idea of what this function is or what kind of function would behave this way. Okay, let's get into it. So our first approach would be to make that assumption we always make that for a function to have a very smooth interaction with its derivative, um, it has to be some kind of exponential function. So we're gonna say that y lets this function we're talking about be e to the rx. And then we can say that the first derivative is r e to the r x. The second derivative is r e, sorry, r squared e to the r x. If I differentiate this one more time, will be r to the third e to the r x. Oh, and then we have to do that one more time. It's gonna be r to the fourth e to the r x. So if we go back here, we only need this one. We don't need the rest, right? So we just need to say, if we move this over here, we can say now that r to the fourth e to the rx is equal to y, which is this, e to the rx. Now in solving equations, this is why you did pre-calculus if you did, I've seen people say, divide both sides by something. It's very, incorrect for you to divide both sides by something because um, unless you know that whatever you want to divide both sides by can never be zero. So in this case, we can actually divide both sides by something just to make a point. Okay, so we can divide both sides by e to the rx because I know e to the rx can never be zero or you can as well put them on the same side and factor. Let's just do the typical thing. So two ways, you can divide both sides by e to the rx because e to the rx can never be zero, or you can just move this over and say r to the fourth e to the rx uh, minus e to the rx, zero. So that means that, what do we have? We've got e to the rx times r to the fourth minus one equals zero. And just as we said, e to the rx can never be zero, which means this is the only thing that can be zero. So we can say, therefore, r to the fourth minus one is equal to zero. And now we need to solve this. Now, why did I choose this question? I know students who would, as soon as they see one on one side and into minus, they move the one to the other side and they say, oh, let's take the fourth root. So r to the fourth equals one so that r equals the fourth root of one, which is equal to one. So they get one answer, r equals one. But that does not conform with the fundamental theorem. If you have r to the fourth minus one equals zero, then you need four answers. You have to get four answers, even if they are repeated. And you cannot say it's r, uh, r equals one four times. <laughs> no, because there are other numbers that would give you the same answer. So here, what do we do? Well, we know that this is the difference of two squares. This is r squared squared minus one squared. So this becomes r squared minus one times r squared plus one, and it's equal to zero. So now we have another product, and we know that either of these can be zero. So we're gonna say r squared minus one equals zero, or r squared plus one equals zero. So if we solve for r, we're gonna get r in this case will be equal to plus or minus one. Or here, we're gonna say r squared equals minus one. 
so that if we take, okay, actually let's take the square root, so that r will be r squared equals 1, and then you have r equals plus 1 or minus 1, right? Or here we have r will be equal to plus or minus the square root of minus 1, which is plus or minus i. The four answers are r1 equals negative 1, r2 equals 1. So for this r, I'm going to leave it this way as r3 equals plus or minus i. So our general solution is going to be y is equal to the first one, c1, e to the negative 1x plus c2, e to the x plus. And remember that whenever we have complex roots, we know that it's always a conjugate form. This gives us c3 cosine x plus c4 sine x. This is the general solution to this equation. Now, will it always be with these many terms? No. But any of this, if any of this shows up in an equation, any combination of these four will always satisfy this condition. So, if you just take this and you differentiate this four times, you will notice that it's exactly where you started from, ignoring the c. If you take this, the same thing, you take this, the same thing, you take this, the same thing. So these are the four functions that would have this property. You should try it for, just change this to three and see what you get. See you in the next video. Never stop learning, because those who stop learning have stopped living. Bye-bye.